Hello and welcome to another video on the Range Rover Sport SV and uh, obviously we've got Troy with us today so thank Thanks, you for Max. coming along sir. Always a pleasure. Good. Now as you will know followers of our channel we've done three videos on the uh, the SV now um, one last year when we went to Range Rover House. Open House yeah. Uh, that was a good event and then we uh, when you picked it up uh, three hours after we picked it up we took it straight to APM and we did that first look video which yeah. you uh, which you've seen on our channel. Um, and then we were due to film the proper review on the Saturday. Three days later. Three days later. Yep. Um, but that didn't go to plan. And we want to explain to you why it took so long to, well, to release the full-blown review of this car. Yeah. So we're going to explain, this video is going to explain to you what's gone wrong with this car. Because, uh, yeah. 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 And, um, and the second bit, you've done 1,000 miles. So we're going 1,300. 1,300 miles. right now, yeah. There we go. So very similar story to what we did with the 750S. Yep. We're going to incorporate the two things. And... Um, and yeah, a Range Rover breaking down is, is uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, reliability, Max, that's what it's about. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's, let's hit the road and we'll explain to you on the road. Let's go. Okay, so we're out on the road. Would you want to start with what's gone wrong with the car, Troy? <laughs> So we um, get your popcorn. Yeah, we uh, we picked the car up on the Wednesday night. Uh, left the dealership at five thirty. We were um, ish, um, so we went straight to APM Customs. Thanks to them, um, and we did the first review literally three hours after we arrived at the dealership yeah, to yeah. start. Yeah. You know, doing everything you do with a dealer, etc. Then I had three days to do the 500 kilometers which is the 310 mile run-in period that's it um no problem the wednesday night no problem all day thursday um i did notice it opened up when i left the dealership it was a little bit quiet a little bit um held back from the start because it's only four and a half thousand revs yeah when limits, you first get it. it limits talk and yeah and, horsepower and it was and fine all the day on the thursday and then the morning i woke up i was taking my daughter to school on the friday and i looked down and i saw 320 miles on the clock so i thought oh brilliant we're we're into full power mode Good to go thunderbird <laughs> yeah so i left home got got in the uh, got in the car on the way to the school and i noticed if I pulled out of, say, a T-junction or from traffic lights with a little bit of vigour. Nothing, nothing flawed to the floor, no drop down, nothing like that. Just quite quickly, in SV mode, there'd be a little bit of a thump from the back of the car, middle to back of the car. Um, that progressively got worse throughout Friday. I rung the dealer and said, look, this doesn't sound right. It could be the wheels trying to get traction, but it's not that wet. Um, you know, I hadn't driven an SVR. Um, I've had sports cars and supercars, but hadn't hadn't experienced this car, so yeah. I didn't think it was normal. Um, the dealer said, "Look, bring it in Monday. Master Tech will be in, um, and we'll have a we'll have a look at it." Well, you brought it to. Um, well, we, we went to go out for a drive on Friday night. Yeah, so so we went for a meal at, at, at um, out together that evening to yeah. talk about the shooting for the next day because yeah. we were we were shooting the um, Ferrari. That's it. Um, <clears throat> and whilst you're there, I took you out um, in the vehicle just to say what do you what do you think of. Yeah, because that was the, the first time you unleashed the power, so I thought, right, let's yeah, go out let's and go feel and, it. let's go and have a look. Um, so we, I drove it spirited, and as you say, from zero upwards, it was yeah, dunk, dunk, dunk. It, was, it, it was, was a thud, and it got worse. And do you know what it sounded like? It sounded like a chain, like a chain dragging. Yeah, or a, or a gear slipping. Well, you know, that, yeah. a dunk, dunk, dunk. It was a, you felt it through the car. Or like when a CV joint snaps, it sounded like that. Yeah, it sounded mechanical. So then. Um, we uh when we came back to the car park and reversed into the car park the car felt like um four by fours with wide tires when it kind of fights itself reversing mm. back yeah and then um on my way home that evening um we you know i was driving out and went round a roundabout and it just made an almighty crunching noise 
and um, metal on metal movement are pulled straight in after the roundabout into a little short lay-by. There wasn't many cars on the road, um, but cars would have had to move around me. Yeah. I saw down the road there was a um, better pull-in, mm -hmm. so I drove for like 100 yards creeping, and about halfway down that distance, the sound just stopped, as if it had, whatever it was, whatever was damaged was eating itself and um, <clears throat> when I got to the end of the road it um, went so I checked over the car um, I texted believe it or not it was seven o'clock at night um, I texted um, the sales guy Nick McGilloway who have got to give a shout out to yeah. Nick most unbelievable salesman if you need a Range Rover or a Land Rover or um, anything like that Conway Land Rover, give him a call, speak to Nick McGilloway. Unbelievable salesperson. As I say, Nick kept on email, texting me, just checking everything was all right, etc., etc. Um, I rung Land Rover Assist and they said, we'll have somebody there with you tomorrow. Not that evening, we'll have it tomorrow. It wasn't a problem for me because I parked up at home. They didn't necessarily know that, yeah. um, but I, I was fine with it. At the end of the day, I got home. Then, then sort of some of the fun started. So... When I was on the phone to Land Rover Assist, they couldn't actually find my car on the system. So I told them the it, we had to go all the way to the VIN number, which I understand because I've got a private plate on this car. Yeah, yeah. We went all the way to the um, VIN number, um, and the VIN number um, came up on her system. Whether somebody had put it in wrong came up as a silver SVR, and I think it, she said 2021 plate. SVR, which would have been the old shape, five litre V8, the, the five litre V8. Mm. Anyway, didn't think anything about it. They're on the way. The next day, um, they text you the A8, say we're almost there, we're on you next, all that sort of stuff. And they turned, they, they physically, I saw them at my window, and I saw the gentleman drive past, then drive back. Um, at which point, I went outside, and he was looking down at his thing, and I walked over and said, "Are you here about the SV?" The SV, and he said. Yeah, and I said, well, it's that one there. And he went, yeah, that's, he, that's he, not an SVR. He was looking out for an SVR, and, yeah. And at that point, he, he was um, a little bit perplexed by it. Didn't even move the car, walked over, plugged it into the um, diagnostics um, of it. Um, he did have a look underneath the car and was a bit bamboozled, because if you, if you look underneath a... Um, a McLaren SVR, it's very complex around the back end of the car. McLaren the, SVR? A McLaren SVR. <laughs> sorry, Range Rover SV. Sorry, I've got a McLaren yeah, on yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, but on. it's McLaren suspension. So when he looked under the back of the car, he just turned around and said, it's not, you know, yeah. this isn't a typical Range Rover. He was a bit flummoxed by it. He said, but let's plug it in and see if there's any faults. As soon yeah. as he plugged it in, it was showing some um, trans... Uh, transfer box, running faults, gear, yeah. train sort of faults. Um, and he said, look, he said, I can't do anything by the side of the road with this. Is it drivable? I said, yes, it is. Where I live, it's quite a complex road. He said, so even if we send a low loader for you, mm. you're going to have to drive it out onto the main road yeah. for us to be able to collect it because a, a flatbed's not going to be able to come and get it. Um, and I said, look, I'll take it to the dealership on Monday. Um, Obviously, by this point, we weren't going shoot it. Well, you had gone out to the shoot, but I wasn't coming with you. Yeah, you backed um, out the Friday night, literally the night before yeah, we were supposed to yeah. due to film, weren't we? And we were going to use this as the filming car. We were, It was yeah. going to be quite, you know, what, what does it take to film a Ferrari? It's a good job. A, an yeah. SUV, you know, a super SUV. Yeah. Um, so then went to the dealership on... Um, Monday. The Monday, and then they had it um, there... And, you know, as with any dealer, Nick was keeping me, you know, posted all the way through. Um, I believe the transfer box was um, found as being the fault. Mm. Um, from what I understand, I'm, I'm, I am an engineer, but not a car engineer. The transfer box is what controls all the power to each wheel, um, etc. Yeah. Which made sense because if I put my, if I put, applied any power on the Friday night on the way home. It and I mean, noise. just, no, it didn't make a noise. The traction control light lit up. Oh yeah, I remember and, that, yeah, and yeah. The, and the, and the, yeah. and you know, I know like now as I'm driving along, if I literally just put my foot down a bit, the traction control light would flash because it was sensing that something was spinning mm -hmm. quicker than it should and there was no pressure on it. So I understand that's controlled by the transfer box. What I was told um, or, or led to believe was 
a seal had gone in the transfer box. So therefore, oil had seeped out because I was asked the question of, was there any oil on my driveway? Was yeah. there any oil anywhere it'd been? None at all. I, I didn't see anything. So as far as I can work out, the oil would have either gone from the manufacturer of the transfer box, manufactured wrong, don't know, speculation, um, but there was no, no other than residual oil in the transfer box. Plus, you've got to remember, underneath this car, there is all sorts of covers. What, yeah. The transfer box is above the exhaust, um, so there's an awful lot of places for oil to collect that I wouldn't see if it's only small amounts there that are no left There was no residue anywhere, was there? I, there was no residue anywhere. Um, so it was the seals and it was the... It was the transfer box and a lack of oil. That's, that's, that I can pinpoint. And, it was, and this is the reason why it's taken us so long to get the full-blown review out, because obviously a few people have been following us on Instagram and TikTok. Oh, asking where's it coming, SV. when's it coming? So people have messaged us saying, well, when's it coming, when's it coming? We've, we've kept quiet about it. Well, it's, to, to be fair yeah. to JLR yeah. and Nick, I keep harping on about Nick, but to, to be fair to my contact Nick, I then had a number of contacts within JLR that got in touch all the way up to the executive office because yeah. you know they don't want to hear about a flagship model yeah, yeah, yeah. and then maybe not knowing that we're part you know that obviously I have affiliations with the Driven Plus channel yeah um, so <laughs> it probably I don't I don't think it would be any different with any customers but I think knowing who we were and what we were was probably not a good thing going back to the the transfer box because obviously a few people contact us regarding that because as owners of this car we're not we weren't the only ones have come out since yes. so with this length of time there was a batch issue the i believe there has been a, a batch issue with a whole load of transfer cases but again jlr and nick kept me appraised the whole way through um you know they've been fantastic i've got to say that um, and the car's back, and it has not missed a beat in the 700. Or, well, a th I'm on seven. I'm on one three two eight now, mm. so a thousand miles. It hasn't missed a beat. It's just for now. That was that was in second pulling off. So, quick, but yeah. the um, but as I say, from a standstill, not a launch. It's a very aggressive. And change. you know when you put your foot down there, a lot of people are saying, oh, it's not. It doesn't sound as good as the old SVR. We've got double glazing, mate. There's double yeah, glazing. Yeah, there is that, but... They, I, they're I, not pumping... Sorry, I've got to say, they are, they are, they are, I think they are pumping a little bit of noise well, in. They will do, yeah. But I've been in BMWs. Christ, I had a, a 640 diesel a Grand Coupe years ago, and the outside and the inside sounded completely different. They completely pumped in the most mm. false noise mm. inside the cabin. And I find that with BMWs here, they've sound deadened the car, and yeah, it sounds, sounds good, sounds throaty, um, but I think if you have all the windows open, it sounds every bit as good under, under load in a different way to the 5 litre, yeah. in a different way, and I think that's the point. And I think what we'll do now, we'll put a clip um, of this sound versus, because we've had your old SVR on the channel yeah. before, so what we'll do, what you'll see on the channel in the next few seconds is the video clip of this sound versus the 5 litre SVR, which would be quite interesting, so have a listen right now. So you've done a thousand miles, um, as you said, it hasn't missed a bit, obviously from that big issue, but if that didn't have that batch issue, the car would have been perfect. It would have been good. It wouldn't have missed oh, a bit. It hasn't since. Haven't, haven't had a single um, niggle or worry about it. You know, most mm. people would, th would be listening for everything. You'd have to listen really hard to find even a pin drop so, sometimes in this sure. car. And then obviously, you know, you've done a thousand miles and and, you know, everyone's saying, oh, £190,000 for a Range Rover Sport is ludicrous. How can you spend so much on a car? Does it play in the back of your mind that you've spent so much money on this car and it's, you know, it's a Range Rover Sport and you could have got a, a 707 or perhaps maybe a, a Nurse? Um, I went to see those cars. I went to see those cars. I think... You know, what made you get this car? As a, because obviously they're all sold out. You're not the only one. There's yeah, 500 yeah. Of, of you um, who's bought one. 
I, what's been the selling point? Well, I've all, I, I've had Range Rovers now since uh, 2013. So as my um, personal businesses grew, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, yeah. I you know I wanted a car. I was I have had BMWs, I've had X5s, I've had all sorts of BMWs. Um, me personally, and I'm sure the BMW fans out there will say differently. I d Range Rovers in a in a weird class of its own. Yeah, I agree. I don't it, you know it can compete with a Rolls Royce. And I say that from a point of technology, the way it drives, the air, the, the magic carpet ride that is so synonymous with yeah. the uh, Rolls Royce. Sorry, I've driven those two cars. My 510 uh, big Range Rover, the proper one, the, P510 the, the e. P510e, yeah. that rode every, every bit as good. And I think if you take the batteries out of that car and you put a 530, mm. um, well, you know, do the SV, with the less weight, SV, the only thing I ever had in that car was if there was a massive pothole that we do have in this country, that was the only time you noticed and thought, oh, I, I actually felt that. Yeah. Um, take, take that out of it and that extra weight gone and I think the suspension in that car would have, I'll just glide over even the biggest yeah. of uh, things. But then you come down to a 707. Mm. They're very small. Mm. They are. You can argue it's a family car. For me personally, yeah. it's about the size of a Macan. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm sure if you took this engine and put this engine in a Velar, this would be a very different car mm. again because it's a smaller, lower weight vehicle. And yeah. um, the same as you could put it into well, the they, Evoque. They do have a Velar SV, don't they? They did do. They Whether did they're going to do it yeah, on this, well. I don't know. So, yeah, I think I, I completely agree. I think Range Rovers is, you know, it was always the leaders, well, I think still is the leaders in the class of me. Rolls Royce has come on, then Lamborghini, Bentley as well. But for me, it's still. Yeah. The number and, one. People are still buying them. Turn right here, look at this. You know, the 360 cameras. Put your indicator on right. That's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Look so, at the level of technology there. Yeah. And then put put your foot on the brake, and the brakes come on. That's amazing. I've never noticed that, Max. That's really good. See, go. And the fact that it is actually an SVR, yeah, yeah. in the it's picture got, it's as got well. The little white badge there as well. So uh, it's it's very impressive. And it shows the wheels turning and everything. Yeah, how cool! Is it that? is good. And the back wheels, front and back wheels, yeah. it, it actually shows moving. Anyway, for everyone watching and tuning in for our video on the Range Rover Sport SV, I'd like to thank you. And uh, we're going to get a lot more content on this car, aren't we mate. And uh, yeah, you know, document every stage. I think you're potentially thinking of of, of wrapping it. A colour change, yeah. A colour change, change, which we'll document. It's going for PPF uh, Monday. Yeah, APM. So, um, so yeah, the, the, you know, the book's open with what we're going to get on this. So, yeah, and we're going to ask actually, we're going to ask you, the subscribers, um, what you uh, what colour you think I should go. I'm going to down select some colours. You guys mm -hmm. um, decide what you think. I'm going to document that journey with us. So. I say subscribe to the channel because um, there's a lot of you who watch but there's a lot of you who doesn't click that subscribe button so make sure you click the subscribe button uh, so you don't miss any of our latest uploads and turn your notifications on thank you for watching and we'll see you soon cheers run it run it you are all I needed better now I'm buzzing yeah she said I didn't change I said you just stay the same swear she used to have a plan but now she doesn't Excuses got me jaded I see that you never grew from cracks off in the pavement All them likes on Instagram don't really mean you made it She said I didn't change I said you just stay the same Baby, you want it in place, yeah I was hoping you send a text I wish you would listen to the thing in your chest I got wrapped up in your mask Don't get too close, I got ice in my veins, yeah Running through them words in my head Where did you go, huh?